Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I have another diagnosis video. This is a 2012 S550 formatic customer complaint. Is a suspension light coming on? Sudden, you know, telling him to stop because if the car is too low. He said at first that he didn't notice that the car was too low, but I'm actually seeing it now. I don't want to capture the license plate of the car, but this side is lower than the driver's side for a lot. So it's an obvious condition right now. I have the auto logic for this. The car has 90,000 miles. I haven't ID the vehicle or anything yet. So let me turn the ignition on. So yeah, 90,000 on it. Let's see how we're gonna do with this. Let me ID the vehicle, guys. I like that the video is not super long on just doing that. All right, guys, I got the full report. Hopefully, we got everything we need in here. All right, let me. Uh, yeah, let's do this. So, we got a motor. It says a D4900 combustion engine, but that's not the complaint. Left front wheel speed sensor. It's not available on the CAN bus. Radar sensors, we can disregard that. Not my problem. Uh, adaptive brakes, suspension, recovery times are in feeling of air suspension. Australia is too long. Critical vehicle level from right. Okay, so that's a, a guide on what we need to attack. The computer is uh, seeing that the front right is taking too long to recover. Then so most likely we have a a leak in there. Let's see what else we got. Anything that has to do with that. Um, right from dynamics, it nope. All right, so that's that's what I'm attacking. Even though we have a a big list of codes, um, let me mail this to me. Come on. Trying to make the videos as short as, as possible so you guys enjoy more uh, more of information than just me going around and trying to send myself information. But so, all right, that's perfect. So we definitely have a problem on the front right. Um, I forgot to mention this is a S-Class W221, which is the uh, fifth generation on the S-Class. Uh, let's go to, I guess, should be in chassis. Yeah, suspension. And let me sit in here. One second, guys. Uh, I'm better. So we can do, let's see first the vehicle level. Specify values are stated, they're not referred to driving level, blah, 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 whatever. Left front vehicle, 33. Right front vehicle, minus 18. So, rear vehicle level, 6 millimeters. So, the right side is negative, and I can feel it. I can see it on the car. Let's see if we can do any. Let me see. Pressure sensor values. Let me see what we got here. And left front suspension. Let me see the pressure. Pressure, uh, the pressure sensor, 12 point, let's say 13 bar. And the height is 32. Now let's go to the right. Yeah, look at the difference in pressure. It still holds some pressure. Let's say five bar. And minus 16, pressure on left rear. So we got positive pressures on the left side. Let's see the right rear. It still is a positive pressure. So yes, everything is on the right side. This is just by me sitting in here, you need to collect information, make sure that you're going and attacking the right problem, right? I mean, we know that we have a suspension issue. 
it seems like computer is reading right. Now let's do, we have a, a dynamic test. Right from level control valve, pneumatic test components of the right level control valve. The suspension of strut is charged until it reaches a higher level of 25 millimeters. The level valve is closed. On an intake level valve, okay, it says on an intake level valve, the pressure should now be greater than four and a half bars. Right, let's see if it does it automatically or we need to start a car. You see fail. Let's go to another one. That one fell immediately. But do I need to have the car running? I don't see anything that tells me that. I mean, I know that this has to have um, a reservoir, right? So let's just start and see what it does on the, le on the left side. Pressure relief valve open for five seconds. Yes, it fell. So, and we know that the left side is not bad. So let's just start the car. Let's go back out of here. Left front level control valve. Let me see what else. Left this between compressor and belt lock. Now, let's do this. Let's try the left side. I can feel the suspension now going down. And it still says it fails. Left front level control is not operating properly. So, can I take this as and it went down 25. Let's do it one more time. Because it's probably failing in it because of the right side. Yeah, it's not it's not liking the level of the car. The suspension is trying to charge until it reaches a higher level of 25. The level valve is closed. Yeah, that's the problem. Since the right side is so low, right front level control valve. All right, let's try that one more time. It might be charging. Checking the level of the suspension. Yeah, it fell. At least on the left side, it tries. It didn't change. Sorry guys, my Bluetooth got disconnected for some reason. All right, so let's try this one more time on the left side. So we're on 21, so looks like the car it reached, a, it reached a level. I'm on the left side. Yeah, it's not like it is steel, but it went down. All right, let me try to stop the car. The technician on. It doesn't tell me what the uh, requirements for this test is. And I can definitely see that it's not like in the suspension height. Yeah, no, it's not letting me do it. Aromatic compression unit, pressure release valve will be open for five seconds. Compressor will be switched for 50 seconds maximum. I'm not sure because my speaker dying. I haven't even used it for much. All right, let's, my microphone, sorry, but I can hear that pip in there. Test pass. All right, this one passes. This is no values. See if we can do the rear. No. All right, let's.
let's go back to values one more time. I want to see what the actually um, pressure sensors we can see everything. So we got around look pressure sensor on the left. So it went down to ten. That's the left run. About right front. This is still minus twenty eight. Let me take a, a tape measure and measure both sides of the car in the front. Let me see the rear. It says three millimeters and the right three millimeters. So it looks like it's even on the back. Let's see that. All right, guys. I took the, just a, a rough uh, reading, you know, with a tape measure on the heights. LF, left front, RAF, right front, and so on, right? Left rear, right rear. So we have definitely the right on low. Uh, one test that I can also do with the scanner, I got the ignition on right now, and then let me go back here. We can go over to um, actuations. Uh, we can move the suspension to, uh, let me make sure this is focusing correctly. It's a little weird light. Move to calibrator manually, and then next, and then I can select to lift or lower anything I want. Let's say uh, the front left, I can lower, and I can feel it. You can see the values. I'm going to stop. So you saw it was, and now it's a one. I can lift it, and the card is off. So, in my plan, lift and love, friend. Left front, sorry. And it's coming up slowly, but it's coming up. All right, so I can stop that. One thing I want to see in there is the pressure to hold. And it's perfectly hold. Uh, let's try that on the front right. I'm going to raise it because it's already in minus eight. So let's lift front right. And it's lifting it. I hear a, a hissing. I'm not sure if it's in my car and next to somebody else's bay. But the, so the highest it goes is to one. Let me stop that and look at the values. It went from one to zero. Might have to start a car. Make it this a little quicker. But yeah, you can see there is loose impression. I was actually doing a little faster. Let me start the car one second so we can charge the compressor, uh, the compressor better. You can see now it's a minus two. You can hear the alarm of the car running. So let's do that again. Let's lift the right front. And I cannot go, well, actually with the car run, I went to two. I'm gonna accelerate a little. I mean, even if it doesn't matter, it's an electric, electric compressor, right? So it doesn't go past two, two millimeters. Let's stop that. Immediately it wraps zero. I mean, I can see the suspension, it did raise a little bit and I can feel it on the car, but not much. Not as, as on the left side, because if I lower the left side, look at the numbers now, you can see that the right side is holding because the left is high, so we can stop that. See, it's now in minus 15. Let's try to lift the, the right and see if that changes. Lift in front right. Just as I can. I mean, it is doing it a little bit. Trying to go to positive numbers. Zero is the maximum. Stop. Minus two.
trying to set the suspension kind of like I'm in a very level uh, surface. I wanted to calibrate it at least manually the height and see if I can check that. One second, guys. Let me check that with a tape measure. What I'm measuring right now is in 28 evenly in the front, and we can see that here. So values are minus two and minus three. So it's pretty even, and it is. So the car right now is level, but it's leveled by me. If I go back, oh, I'll lose that. I want to see the actual values. Equal level, next. So yes, we are level on the front, as you can see. Even though the numbers are negative, but it's evenly. And we got a six millimeters on the back. Hopefully you guys can see in that, but left front, right, and rear. All right, so let's go back to the actuations. Uh, actuations, uh, levels, manual, next. Because we can see everything we want here. So let me turn the car off. Put the ignition back on. Let's see what we see. Because as far as um, height, it is reporting the right height. See, it's not, it's not wrapping now that I lower the left front. This is staying in there, but that doesn't mean we're in the right height. So let's try to lift the front left. I can feel it going up. I'm going to put it to like a five right there. So I went to six, seven. Can we do that on the front right? That he's in is definitely in the car. I can hear like <laughs> definitely a hissing in there. So I'll stop that. Let's lower the front left. Stop it there. And then you see the right front went to minus five. So it's actually being whole by the left side. But then let's try to lift it again on the right side. Nothing happens. A little bit. I mean, it went up to zero. Stop. And it goes negative immediately. So, guys, we do definitely have a leak in there. I'm just confirming before I jump into into that but yeah definitely we got a right front most likely is the strut it's a known issue on this car but I got to check connections but this is how you check from the vehicle you don't really need to get your hands dirty all right guys so uh, um, if I find something very important that is not the strut I would put them into like a bonus footage for this uh, same video Otherwise, thank you so much, and don't forget to subscribe. And this is how you diagnose at least a problem with that suspension. We can activate it up and down. We know that it didn't pass the test. So we got to go straight to it. I will most likely put some Buddhist, uh, sorry, bonus footage and then uh, get it on the video. Well, guys, it did actually came with like something good. So when I was raising the car, it just blew their their back. So the hissing noise that we were hearing as we lowered it and raised it up, it was. Hopefully, you guys can see the rupture on the air back right there. So it's the front right, exactly as we were seeing on the scan. So either one of the valves didn't open and didn't let the suspension expand. And it blew it out. I mean, but what can you do? You need to race the car in order to check everything, right? I mean, this one is perfect. So that is a, ner a normal working suspension. And we saw it on the on the captures for the scanner. So that is the rear left. 
to put a light in there. That's just a boot outside, but that also protects in cover. One second, guys. All right, guys. Sorry. All right, guys. Uh, the Mercedes is done. I already replaced the, the strut. I mean, I didn't need it to do much testing. It was already leaking, and then it blew the, the Velo boot, which is actually just a protection, right? But to replace that is pretty simple. Just three nuts on the tab and 121 millimeter at the bottom. Uh, just to hopefully you guys can see. Well, it's OEM Mercedes Benz. I mean, you don't want to do anything besides that on a car that's expensive. I recommend to replace both. I just wanted to do one. I mean, I'm okay with that. It's their car, their decision, but it's good. So you can see now suspension is running. I mean, the car is running. That's what you need to do. Make sure you disconnect the line. I mean, if you don't have a blow uh, strut like I did on this one, you need to lower and release the pressure. And then you replace the strut. And this one, I didn't need to do that. It was already blow. But uh, when you install the, the strut back with the hose, make sure when you're doing all the operation, take the key off the car, lock the car, don't let anyone touch it. Make sure that you open the hood, you're going to need it open. And that's it. I mean, it's pretty simple. And then after that, just start the car, let it run, let it, you know, stabilize and adjust the suspension. One thing that I want to show is that we have no lights. And as you can see, the RPM, wow, <laughs> we got the fire department next to us. But as you can see, no coats. All right, guys, see you next time.